Welcome to the video. In this video we'll be taking a look at this piece of technology. Not the Mobius Action Cam, the thing that's underneath it. That's a Hobby King Action Cam FPV docking station with mini video transmitter. And this allows us to plug the Mobius into it and then send the video signal down to our goggles or ground station via any of the 32 channels available to us on the 5.8 GHz band. A big thank you to the team at Hobby King for sending me this FPV transmitter and Mobius to try. It's kind of replacing in one little unit what we traditionally do in FPV by using a transmitter, some kind of power supply and also an additional action cam of your own choice plugged into it. So essentially all of this technology is being handled in the one little package. Now this provides an awful lot of flexibility for those of us that want to pop it on the top of things like flying wings and other devices and you'll see loads of images in other videos of people popping this on top of wings, planes, quadcopters, you name it, to actually turn it into an FPV ship and that's great. I'm not going to do that in this video, what I'm really going to do is talk about the options to actually configure the action camera so that you get the best experience when you're FPVing. So in this video we'll look at what you get in the package, the other things that you're probably going to need. We're going to look at then how you connect up to the Mobius and configure it so that you're actually recording at 720p when you're FPV flying rather than 1080. That will reduce the lag that you get out of the Mobius and make it a much more pleasant FPV experience. Then we'll look at a couple of safety bits and then finally we'll talk about the, my experience of actually using this in practice. There are an awful lot of other videos on the channel about the Mobius. I'll link to them in the description. So if you're interested in knowing more about the camera and the different options, then go and have a look at those. First thing we're going to talk about then is what actually comes in the packet. What, what you actually get is the mount and you also get some additional cables for it. And these look like these are the cables that were actually came for the little FPV transmitter, you can just see it hiding in there, that's actually encased at the back of the mount. And it also comes with a little manual that actually shows you the position of all the channels. Now by default mine came um, set for channel A2, I'm using Fat Shark Kit here and I'll show you it working with a couple of ground stations, uh, Boscam, Fat Shark and Black Pearl at the end to show you it all working. Because um, one of the things that occasionally I have to be careful of is the uh, non-branded transmitters sometimes using it with fat shark equipment you can um, get some interference so we'll we'll test that that's okay um, and that's really what all you get now what I would say here is if you're going to invest in one of these while you're buying it before you press the checkout button buy yourself two other bits of equipment the first I would say is get yourself a circular polarized antenna of some description. There's loads of different options. Whip aerials are fine, but I would say if you go into FPV, and most of you that have been FPV will know it already, get yourself an aerial. Now, the nice thing is, is that the SMA connector on here is the same that Fat Shark uses, so you want an aerial that if uh, there we go, camera. The pin is in the middle because it has a hole actually on the transmitter. So if you have an aerial that has the pin in the middle, they will fit. And I'll say that's absolutely the first thing you want to buy and the first thing you want to change. Second thing then is you need to get yourself a JST cable. Now it's one of these that actually fits in the back that powers everything. It doesn't come with one in the kit. So you're going to have to order one of those or you're going to order yourself or get hold of a little adapter or some description if you're going to run it off something like the balance plug of your existing flight battery. So now we've done that, let's have a look at uh, the actual channels and how they all work. Here are the 32 channels that we can access via this transmitter. So they're typically grouped into four bands, usually called band A, B, E and F, but in this instance it's called bands A, B, C and D. But don't let that confuse you, band E is C and F is D. There's just slightly different ways of referring to them and occasionally it can be a little bit confusing, which is why we're doing this part of the video. 
As you can see here, each of the bands has eight channels in it, and I've tried to map some of the common systems onto it. So for example, the Fat Shark Immersion RC stuff that I use all the time is tends to be on band F, or called band D here with this equipment. So by default, most of my stuff is set up for the first channel in band F, which is F1. So we'll look at how we set that up in a second. To actually change the channels on the actual unit itself is via the little bank of dip switches at the top just behind where the Mobius plugs in. What you do is you use the first two switches to actually set the group that you're interested in, whether it's not you want A, B, C or D, as it's called in the manual. And the last three switches are used to then select the channel that you want within that band. So for the example that we have here, I want to set this transmitter up to work with my Immersion RC Fat Shark equipment that I have, and I'm going to want band D1, which is 5.74 GHz or 5740 MHz. If you look up on here the frequency that your receivers can see, then you'll be able to see clearly which band you're talking about. And on the left-hand side there, that's the graphic actually from the manual itself. The manual is really small, it's a bit of an eye test, so hopefully that'll be easy for you to see. So for me to set it up for band F1, or D1, as it's hit here in the manual, I'm going to put the first two dip switches to on to select group D, and I'm going to select the last three dip switches to both down position or off to select channel one. So with it like that, then we're ready to use it with the Immersion RC kit. One of the things that we do need to do before we go any further is plug the Mobius into the computer and configure it so that it's going to use 720p when it's recording and that will dramatically reduce the amount of lag that we're going to see and I'll actually demonstrate that at the end of the video. So let's go back to the bench and we'll set up the Mobius then we'll plug it into the PC and I'll show you the software that you need to just make sure that you have two modes on the camera one which is 1080p if you want to record in full HD and a slightly reduced 720p which will still look glorious and give you a great recording but actually be better for FPV. So let's do that now. The first thing we need to do before we go and download any software is actually to create a little configuration file on the SD card that's in the Mobius. So making sure that you have the SD card already in the camera, what you do is you press and hold the mode button and then press and hold the power button. And if you hold those for about five or six seconds, you'll get three blinking lights. Once you've got that, it's ready to plug into the PC. So pop a cable in the USB at the back and put the other end into your computer. You'll need to download a bit of software in order to change that configuration file. And what you need to do is, first of all, go and have a look at the Mobius Action Cam website itself, mobius-actioncam.com. You'll find it. If you jump down into Downloads and Info, it'll actually take you to the area where you need to click on to go to the Downloads page for the software. If you click on msetup.zip, which is what we're after, it'll take you to this web page here and then there's the latest Mobius setup.zip file. So you want to click on that and save it onto your desktop. In the zip file there is just one file, it's just an executable, you don't have to install anything, and I've popped that onto my desktop here. So I'm going to plug my camera in, it doesn't need to be powered on at this point, and we're going to double click and start the M setup program. And there it can see we can see that the SD card that's in the back of the camera has appeared as drive E, which is good, and we can see it here. We can see it's a 4 gig drive at Mobius Action Cam version 1.2 of the software. When we click on it in this top part of the screen, we'll get access to all of the settings. I'm going to click on that. There we go. And we have all the basic settings, but the ones we're really interested in um, are going to be the video mode settings. Now, I would recommend that what you actually do is you have a full 1080p video resolution. That's the first um, mode one here. That's going to give us a fantastic uh, recording, but make sure the other setting is 720p. I would also reduce it to 30 frames per second. I'm going to set it as wide field of view as well, and I'm going to say set parameters. When I do this, 
it's going to restart the camera. But it should mean now that one of my modes is 1080p, one of it is 720p, but everything else will be the same. Set parameters. Okay, now we're done. So let's go back onto the bench. Let's install our Mobius, power everything up and give it a go. See if it works with Fat Shark and other receivers and also just see the difference of that different resolution on the Mobius makes to any lag. So back to the bench. So to actually fit the Mobius that's all configured into the cradle is really straightforward. You just kind of slide it home into the back. Now, one thing you do need to be careful of is that you do need quite a bit of airflow at the back. This transmitter is going to get warm, so if you're going to sit it just on the bench playing with it as we are, just make sure you've got quite a bit of insulation um, and uh, kind of airflow around it. So we'll do this next test reasonably quickly. So to power it, we're just going to stick a JST in the back. The only thing I'll say before I power it is just be a little careful because one of the things I found in playing with it is some of the channel assignments aren't completely spot on. So for example, some receivers will pick up the channel I think it is, some others won't, and it's worthwhile kind of playing around, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. At the moment, whoop, we have the dip switches set the first two up, and the others set down, down, up, which is uh, the group D, and that should be the second channel, D2. So it's actually the second channel on the Fat Shark system. So I'm going to actually plug this in. There we go. And um, here is an auto scanning. Uh, receiver which is picking it up on B2 and it picks it up, I don't know if you can see the, the image there, um, beautifully. Um, and you can see that lag that I'm talking about. We'll come back to that in a second. And here are my fat sharks that are powered up. They're actually set to um, E2 or F2. It's really hard to... F but trust me, the, the image in is in those as well. So let me just very quickly show you about the lag that we were talking about. You have to be careful because the antennas are very close so it can upset them. So there's the image that we can see. And right now, I don't know if you can see, but as I move the camera, there's an imperceptible lag between it moving and it moving on the image. If I change the mode to be 720p, I don't know if you can see that better on the camera, but trust me, it actually is slightly faster. So I would recommend, if you're going to use this, set it up as 720p. So in conclusion, what do I think? Well, I really like it. I think it's a really great idea. Those of us that are already using Mobius cameras and would have liked to have done things like pop something on top of a flying wing or another craft that we haven't carefully embedded all of the FPV equipment into is a good one. The actual design of the piece itself has been well thought out. The Mobius is nice and secure. There is a nice hole at the bottom for a Velcro strap to go through or something else that will also make sure this isn't going to fly off the craft. It is a little bit heavier than a standard Mobius. So if I bring my little scales in, make sure it's zero and pop it on, it's about 75.6 grams all up. So when you put it on your craft, do recheck your center of gravity. You might have to move your Mobius mount back very slightly, or you might have to move the battery inside the model back a little bit if this is towards the nose. Two last comments I will make about this that in the version two would be good additions to see. The first is that this is a 200 milliwatt device. Now in an awful lot of places, 25 milliwatts is the legal maximum. So I'm starting to see kit coming out now that has selectable switches, which allows you to switch between 20 or 25 uh, milliwatts, which takes you to the legal limit. And in those places where you don't have that legal limit, you can turn that off and go up to the full transmission power. Having that option in here would be nice to see in the next version. The other thing that would be quite cool is at the moment, the SD card is obscured by the back of this mount. Now, I don't think there's actually anything in this part of the plastic by the side of the um, USB connector, but it would be good if that was actually recessed so that we could pop the SD card in and out, because at the moment the only way to remove it is to remove the entire camera, unplug it all to get the SD card out to have a look at it on a PC.
But with those two comments aside, I would say if you are looking to have a crack at this, I would absolutely recommend it. Don't forget though, I would configure your Mobius to run at 720p. It'll give you a slightly less laggy experience for FPV. And the other thing I'd also comment on is just be careful of the ex slight extra weight that you're gonna get when you pop this onto your craft. Do recheck all your COGs. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.